The next meetup will be in June the 16th. So currently we are uh, making these sessions once a month approximately. And there's no specific date, so depending on uh, how we can manage the schedule with the different presenters. Next presenter will, will be Michael Olafuzi. He's an MVP from Nigeria, and he will be presenting about Excel Online together with Power Query and uh, how we can make uh, use of those two tools together. Looking forward to that. Uh, some news about um, this slide should not be here, but OK. So I usually just bring one very short uh, announcement news about Excel. Just uh, showing you this one about uh, this novelty about pivot tables in Excel for the web that now can be connected to Power BI. So those of you who are familiar and are using Power BI, feel free to check this. I can put this in the chat. There's an article there in the Excel blog, and there's other uh, recent news there that you can check. I usually like to just bring one small um, topic of something new that is happening in Power in Excel because there's so many things happening. The team is producing a lot of uh, making a lot of new features available for us. I usually also send a newsletter about once a month, uh, so. Feel free to, to check how to, to subscribe that later. And I also send some news about what's going on new uh, in Excel. So other events, um, there's a lot of other meetup groups uh, about Excel and Power BI as well. Feel free to check uh, this list. Uh, I will um, recommend you to follow for us. Shaikh, because he's the one putting together this list, combining all the information from different uh, meetup groups. Uh, connect with him on LinkedIn. That's where he posted this um, this uh, list. Every beginning of the month, he announces what is being scheduled in different meetup groups. I'll leave it there for a little while if you want to take a picture or so. And so uh, these first two have passed already. So we are here. May 14 is tomorrow, uh, is the day after tomorrow. So this is the next one. So from here below, it's all about to happen during this month of May. And uh, we have Cristiano Galvão. Uh, he's, an MV, he's an MVP from Brazil and uh, the organizer, him and Ligia Galvão, Galvão, his wife uh, from Brazil, they organized this event, Excel Weekend, has been happening for a couple of years now. And uh, it used to be in person this year. It's going to happen online. So, Cristiano, do you want to share a few words with us? Even if you need to share your screen, feel free to do so. And let us know how people can uh, enroll and um, participate in this event. You are muted. I was ha glad to have had the opportunity to speak at this event last year in person in Brazil. It was really, really fun. Uh, amazing content. And this year will be a different formatting. Usually it's, it happens in January, but uh, this year will be in June. OK, Cristiano, what's happening? <laughs> Still muted. You cannot unmute. Let me see if I can make you a presenter. Uh, I think I had done that before, or maybe not. Just a second here. Uh, Cristiano there. OK, make a presenter. Sorry about that. Uh, maybe when I change the meeting settings, it went back. Uh, you should be able to unmute yourself now. Spotlight. No. Uh, we can see your screen. Let me check uh, if my meeting settings are having some kind of some kind of uh, here. Who can present? Allow me for attendees. Yes, it's turned on. 
Okay. Do you want to try to log out and log in back? Can someone else try to turn on their mics to see if it is something with? I've just tried mine. Okay. Can you hear me? Hello. 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 Hey, that's a cloud. <laughs> <laughs> so, Christian, it must be something with you. I wonder if you want to uh, you just lock off, so check I out. Yeah, track. check out and go back. Come back. OK. And while Cristiano does that, uh, let me come back to my presentation here. So let me keep an eye here. No, no I can't. No, uh, I think it's. There you are. OK. Yeah. So feel Everything, free to. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Everything it's solved with uh, log off and logging. <laughs> oh, that's better. yeah. Well, uh, thank you for the the minutes we have to to listen to John Peltier right now, and and I'm happy. I'm glad to to have the chance to talk about Excel weekend. This is the website that at first sight you will see everything in Portuguese, but just change to English if you if it's your preference or Spanish. We have a uh, full agenda, lots of sessions, and it's totally free and also open. You will find the links for the videos uh, some days before the event. You have the first link for the opening here. And if you want to make sure you will get the reminder for all the sessions, consider to subscribe to the YouTube channel and activate to the, the bell because you get the notifications on your cell phone. And you, we are going to have some networking sessions. Uh, I'm talking about team sessions, so they will not be recorded or broadcast. So if you want to join us, it's like a big party about Excel with Excel people, consider to sign up here. And if you need a key, you find me on LinkedIn and just tell me that you heard, you listened to me on this session here, Toronto Meetup, and I send you a key to register for free. Okay. Uh, so all the sessions are for free anyways, but uh, for uh, and people can participate even without reg uh, can attend the sessions even without registering. Right. But for to have access to uh, the networking sessions and other features, people need to register with one of those codes. Right. Yes, exactly. We needed to filter people to avoid having lots of people that are not related to Excel inside the conversation. So it's a way of trying to keep the environment clean that, mm -hmm. so that everyone can talk uh, in a healthier environment. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can see there's uh, presentations in three languages, Portuguese, English and Spanish, but they yeah. want to uh, happen simultaneously, right? It's one at a time or uh, it's not. Is that correct? one at a time and people can watch later with the captions on YouTube. People who don't who don't understand the original language can watch it later. OK, that's nice. So it's a uh, back to back schedule there. <laughs> <laughs> a, a full weekend. Of, yeah. Yes, a full weekend, three days in fact. <laughs> OK. Uh, any questions? If there are any questions, uh, let us know. I put the link there in the chat, so feel free to let us know. Anything else, Cristiano? It's okay. Thank you very, That's very all. much You're for welcome. watching us. Uh, people may expect to find lots of people that they know, and it will be a great party. Thank you for giving these minutes. Yeah, no worries. My pleasure, and I'm sure it will be a very nice event. As it's, uh, it's, it seems it yeah, it has been the previous years. So, <laughs> just a different formatting. Okay, yeah. so going back to my thank you, Cristiano. I'm going back to my uh, screen here. 
I thought I had missed that that's that slide there. So, uh, John Peltier, our uh, guest today, thank you for coming uh, and offering your time and your expertise, John. It's a great pleasure to have you here. Uh, uh, John Peltier is the owner of this website. Here, this link, if I click here, this gives brings us to, uh, let's see if this opens, brings us to the probably the page that I have used the most in your website. <laughs> I'm, I'm every now and then I need to to reference different uh, ranges in a pivot table uh, with my VBA code, and I always refer to this page here. I'm guessing it's probably one of your um, uh, popular pages. I don't know, but for me it is. I've been I've been here many 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 times. I'm going to. Uh, read if I can bring my presentation here there I usually don't do this but I'm going to try to do this today um, I'm going to read uh, the bio from our uh, page on meetup because I've been assuming that people have read but maybe some of you have not so I'll just uh, do the presentation from there anyway so John Peltier is a master of leveraging the power of Excel to produce and simplify complex solutions in engineering finance and marketing John has been a full-time Excel developer since 2004 and part-time since 1994 1994 was the first was the year when I got acquainted with Excel I didn't know Excel existed before that <laughs> John has received the most um, the Excel Most Valuable Professional Award every year since 2001. So 20 years now. John holds a Doctor of, of Science degree from MIT in Metallurgy and has over 20 years, years of experience in R&D, manufacturing and production support in the aerospace, automotive and industrial parts industries. John's background includes statistics, total uh, quality, and Six Sigma. Even Microsoft acknowledges John as an expert in all things related to Excel charting. Yes, uh, above all things uh, that uh, John knows how to do in Excel, he's been um, a master in charting, and sometimes charts are not so easy to to deal with they are kind of stubborn sometimes but not for John John thank you so much for joining us um, it's a pleasure and an honor to have you here I've been admiring your work for a long time uh, I want I will stop talking and the, the microphone and the video is yours uh, the camera and the screen feel free to lead us from here okay well thank you uh, Celia uh, it's a pleasure to be here um, I've done a few meetups, and uh, I think this is the biggest crowd that I've I've had uh, attending any of, of the meetups. Um, let's see, my window. When I start sharing the screen, um, Teams hides itself, even though it's on a different monitor than I'm sharing. So there's a few things about Teams that are that's still a little crazy. Yeah. Um, so anyway, um, I picked a topic called uh, chart Excel charting tips and tricks, and in general, I'm not a big fan of tips and tricks because um, to me, they seem like kind of a, a shortcut way that people try to become experts without actually spending the time to learn uh, the technology. Um, but I thought I, I would use that as a topic and, uh, you know, we talked a little bit about shortcuts and so forth and then show you some of the technology that the, any shortcuts might be based on. Um, so let me just dive right into it and we'll talk about shortcuts. Um, I have a, a question for people and uh, type your answer into the chat and we'll see what scrolls by. What's your favorite shortcut in Excel? After I see a few of them, I'm gonna continue on. I'll show you a few of my favorite uh, Excel shortcuts, including the best, most important Excel shortcut. And um, and OK, we see Ah, somebody's got mine. Celia, you, you must have uh, read ahead here. <laughs> Sorry. Um, uh, control uh, C, Control V. Yeah, those are popular ones. Control one. That used to be my favorite one. Uh, I'll talk about that. Uh, there's quite a few of them here. So 
uh, let me talk about a few Excel shortcuts. And I used to tell people that my favorite uh, Excel shortcut was Control-1, because what that does, whatever you've selected, it brings up the format uh, dialog for that object. So if you've selected a range and you do Control-1, uh, control one, there it is, and it brings up the format. See, I selected some cells, it brings up format cells. If I have a shape and I do control one, it brings up the task pane over on the side for uh, formatting that. Um, what's another uh, short, shortcut? And uh, okay, F4. Um, F4 used to be another one of my favorites. Um, whenever you do something, like I'll show you if, if I format a range and I'm just going to you know apply a color I can come somewhere else and just hit the F4 key and it will uh, do the same thing to that other thing and it used to be my favorite because I would go in and I'd be working on a chart and I would take an axis and I would format everything about the axis the font the size the color uh, did it have tick marks or not and then I would select the next chart and I would do F4 and it would apply that. Um, but since uh, they changed the whole uh, charting user interface back for Excel 2007, F4 has become a lot less useful than it used to be. So, you know, shortcuts are great as long as they work. Um, control C, we know that one. Uh, control X is for, instead of copy, it's to cut. Um, personally, I don't like using Control X. What I like to do is use Control C and then go somewhere and do control V and then come and make sure it pastes properly before I go and delete what I had copied. Uh, I'm always a little uncertain if I use control X, I'm gonna lose something. So I'm careful about that. Control V is paste, of course. And um, uh, now if you work on a Macintosh, there's no control button, it's a command button. And, but it's C, V, X are the same. Um, as far as I know, most shortcuts are different on a Mac than on Windows, and it, it causes me a lot of problems in general. Um, I have a Mac that I use just to check uh, software that I write, um, that it works on a Mac as well as Windows, um, and they use the command button instead of the control button, and that's fine. The only problem is the control button on a Windows keyboard is underneath my pinky, so I can put my pinky down and do C and V and copy and paste very easily without thinking of it. You know, I have that muscle memory built in, but the command button is somewhere else. And so when I work on a Mac, I tend to type a lot of C's and V's everywhere until I remember what I'm doing. And hopefully I haven't lost too much stuff by, uh, you know, over typing everything with a C and so forth. Um, let's see what else is there. Control shift V. You know what control shift V does? It, it pastes the values, but unfortunately it doesn't do it in, in uh, Excel. It does it in other um, applications, including uh, like my browser window. I can go control shift V and paste the uh, just the value without formatting. And I always try to do that. And control shift V is nice because I can use my my pinky and ring finger and, and type the V. And that's like like, a, you know, doing a power chord on, on the guitar. It's 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 easy muscle memory. But that doesn't work. Um, but I use another uh, shortcut, um, which is Alt ESV. And uh, if you've never used anything like Excel 2003 or earlier, you don't know where that came from. But uh, right there, um, it's from the old menu system. And it's Alt E is for the edit menu, and S is for the paste special item on that menu, and then V is for values. And um, I still remember that. And fortunately, when Microsoft changed all the, the, the menus to the ribbon in, in 2007, they still honor the old shortcuts, um, which is good because, it's, you know, I, I had been using that shortcut for probably 10 years before they changed everything. Um, well, you can still use something else besides Alt-ESV. Um, you can use Control-Alt-VV, and what that does is I'm just going to copy something here just so we see and I'll do control alt V. It brings up the pay special dialogues and then V just selects values and I can say OK and it'll paste my values. Um, control alt V is a little bit more awkward to do with your fingers. It's like one of the Jimi Hendrix chords um, on a guitar 
and I, I never got that good at guitar, so um, uh, as, as much as I tried. And then the last one, which is my absolute favorite, is Control Z, which means that thing I just messed up, undo it right now. Um, it, it, there's there's also a um, um, an undo is the this button here, the the kind of curve to the left arrow up on the QAT, um, but Control Z, and that's the easiest one of all because it's it's my two fingers which are just resting right there in the keyboard, and so that's that's the best shortcut in Excel. Um, those don't have a lot to do with charts. I mean, they all can be used for charts. I can copy a chart and paste it somewhere else. I can copy data, paste it into the chart, although that's not the best way of doing it. Um, and, and Control Z, of course, does work with charts wonderfully. I can I can vouch for that. Um, so, but anyway, so let's talk about some chart shortcuts. And the first chart shortcuts you might learn about, um, if I want to make a chart, I just want to insert a chart. I can select the range, but what's nice is I can just select one cell in the range and Excel figures out how big that range is until it runs into blank rows and columns. And so um, if I, I'm just gonna select one cell in the range and I'm gonna hit the F11 key and that's gonna make a chart for me. And here's the chart it makes. Now, this is, I used to use this all the time, but I don't anymore because I never use a standalone chart sheet anymore uh, when I'm working with Excel charts. I, I want to have my, my chart somewhere on the worksheet that where my data is. Um, if I want it somewhere else, then I'll copy it and paste it somewhere else. But um, So I don't use the F11 key anymore, but there's a shortcut that will make the same chart appear right in the worksheet, and that's the Alt key plus the F1 key. And, and there's my chart right there. And that, that's a nice one too. And what it does is it puts a, a chart using the default chart type, which out of the box is this chart type. It's a clustered column chart. Um, I don't end up using Alt F1 very often because every time I make a chart is different than the time before. And so I don't have a default type that I use. I, I have a whole bunch of different types. And um, so, it's great to have shortcuts, and unfortunately, the shortcuts aren't always uh, good enough at saving time. But that's it. That's enough about shortcuts, and um, it's it's nice to know some. And probably I'll run across some while I'm doing other stuff here. But um, so uh, so enough about shortcuts. Um, let's talk about data first. Chart data. Um, what I found is. Um, if I did want to give you a bunch of tips and tricks, it's about your data. People who have trouble making charts typically have trouble with the data that they've got. And what I'm going to do first is show you what an optimum data range looks like. This is an optimum data range. Um, it's got the series names in the first row. It's got your category labels or your X values in the first column, um, depending on what kind of chart you have. If you make an XY scatter chart, those are X values. But if you're making most every other kind of chart, those are just category labels. They're just labels that sit on the axis. Um, and then I have my series uh, values, the Y values over here, and they're in columns. So the alpha series has the, the data right below it in columns. And um, this uh, cell up here, which I've called TLC, I'll talk about in, in a few moments. Um, but in addition to where certain types of data are, um, there's other things. You want to have your data, it, it should be contiguous, no blank columns or rows, um, because as I showed you before, um, if you just click somewhere here to make a chart, Excel will go until it finds a blank row or column to make the chart. And if you've stuck extra blank rows and columns in there, you're going to mess up Excel. Um, also, the horizontal alignment should be general. Um, what that does is it forces all of your text, which I have in the first column in the first row, that's going to be left aligned in the cell, and all your numbers are going to be right aligned in the cell. Um, if you have everything centered, which a lot of people seem to like to do, I get workbooks from all kinds of people, and half the data ranges they're centered. And the problem if they're centered is 
if, if, if these things are centered, I can't tell if they're really numeric or if maybe they're a numeric value that's been encoded as text because it came from a database or something else, or you know, maybe there's like a, um, uh, if, if, you, if I put three and a space, it, it looks the same as, you know, it's lined up with the six because it's left aligned. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put it back into general alignment. And you know it's general if none of the the alignment buttons up here in the uh, ribbon are selected. So I make it general. Well, actually, I guess uh, it was Excel was smart enough when I put a space after. Look at that. Oh, um, yeah, it, it, it's a new thing, it seems, right? Well, I don't know. Maybe it's been around for a long time, but I'm always careful with things like that. Let's see what if I put a space first. No. OK, so it's um, uh, the way the other way that that thing that that can be made to look like a, a number uh, and not be a number. If I put a, an asterisk first, then you see now all of a sudden it's it's left aligned and that's because it's not really a number. It's text. And of course, you, you get that little that little green triangle that everybody tries to hide. And it's like don't hide them. They're helping you. They're helping you fix your data and, and the little. Uh, the little uh, warning sign just tells you it's a number stored as text and all you got to do is click on that convert to number and we're back to normal. Um, but it's it's important to to, to use the, the general alignment um, and also keep the formatting minimal and consistent. Um, uh, a slightly less optimum version of this is going to look pretty much the same. The only difference here is I've transposed it so my series names are in the first column. And, and the, the categories are in the first row and my series values are are in rows. Still, it's it's no blank rows and columns and all the other rules are are, are valid. Um, sometimes this is a valid way of doing it. If I if I wanted a, a uh, let's say uh, I'm, now I'm going to ruin my nice uh, spreadsheet, but I'm going to show you um, why that might be OK to do. If I go and insert a, a chart, and um, a lot of people like like putting the uh, let me see where is that I never do it so I never know what it is this this data table I hate that data table because I can't ever make it the way I want it to be so I'm not going to use that um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert insert a few um, rows and I'm going to take my chart and I'm going to uh, line it up above the the data and so. Um, I'm not going to spend time to line it up perfectly, but you see now that uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, it goes horizontally and, and so do my axis labels. So um, that's that's um, that's one reason I'll accept somebody doing their their data in the transverse uh, in a transposed manner. Um, so like I said, here's some bad data and I see this all the time. They have dark borders everywhere and so forth. Well, as I was saying, if I if I go to insert a chart and I select some, somewhere in my cell and uh, uh, I, I go to insert a chart, let's make a scatter chart. I've only plotted that data. You can see the data that I've plotted. It's highlighted in the worksheet. So I know something's wrong. So, well, yeah, OK, I could select all of this data and I, I can make a chart and I'll go insert and I'll make my scatter chart again. And that still didn't come out right because um, you know I have a gap here and and okay the the the, the blank rows lead to gaps and I have some other funny business going on and uh, we'll clean that up. So and and in fact what 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 else happens is uh, uh, what did I say it was Alt F1? Um, so no that that's not showing the the thing I wanted to show. Uh, not only do I have um, gaps in the chart, I have a whole bunch of extra series here in the chart, and what they are are, are, are the blank columns that Excel plotted because I selected the, the, the blank cells and I said, here, plot all this stuff. So what you got to do is, is get rid of all that blank stuff. Um, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll delete those. And now let me select, you know, somebody skipped a blank everywhere because they wanted the, the data to look nice in groups of five. And what I tell people is if you want your 
if you want to have a table somewhere to display the data, link it to your chart data uh, or link it to the original data, format that the way you want, insert whatever blank rows your boss wants you to insert, and that way you're not messing up your chart. So, so we took care of blank rows and columns. Uh, and then now let's take care of our alignment because you never know what's what's wrong everywhere. So I'm going to make a general alignment and I see that some things don't line up. And of course, there's a little clue the, the little green triangles exist on some of these and those are numbers stored as text. Well, first of all, if I do just select the cell and I insert my chart, now that's going to work out fine. Uh, it, it's going to make the chart with the whole data. I don't have to select the whole range, including blanks, and I still see that there's some funny values in here. And so first of all, I don't have years across the bottom. And then I have a couple of points on the orange series, which is Q2, that are down at zero. And now if I go back and I look at my my data, I have one year, which is uh, text stored as you know, number stored as text. And I have a couple of values in in uh, the, the, the Q2 range. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to select those two uh, and I guess I got to select them like this in a contiguous range and I'm going to just convert to number and those fix. So I don't have any more on the on the bottom axis and see this 2011 because that's text. It messes up the whole set of X values. So if I make that now, if I convert that to a number now, Excel can read that these are year numbers and I have my year numbers across the bottom. This is all what you can learn from just making a dummy throwaway chart of your data um, um, you know ju just to inspect your data before you're even charting it to to, to you know look at trends or, or or so forth and then now i have this one funny number up here at the top and i can see the little tool tip there it says 2014 and q3 and i look down 2014 q3 i have this number and it's 316.9 and it's like 10 times as high as all the numbers around it so I suspect what happened is somebody um, might have typed that number in wrong. And so, I mean, I'm going to change it here, but of course what you got to do is, is uh, find, find the source of the data and make sure that's what happened. But see now, at least we have numbers that, that are all kind of are consistent with each other. And we've turned a bad chart data range into a good one. And in fact, this is kind of a, I still don't like this because I don't like heavy black borders because they compete with the text for my attention. Um, uh, often I'll get rid of my grid lines altogether and I have a, a little uh, button that I use to give me a, just a very faint outline, which is, you know, it's enough for me to see the rows and columns. Um, I have another one that's a little bit more, I call it nice borders, but what it does is, is put a, a little bit darker border around the outside and light borders inside. And that's kind of a, uh, a little bit easier on your eyes than, you know, what's, what's the, the one that everybody uses. Um, you come here and you find, okay, we'll, we'll put thick outside borders and we'll put um, this and we'll assault everybody who looks at it. Um, but anyway, so now let's look at a few um, data ranges. I told you I was going to explain this TLC and I will in a minute. Um, we'll look at some uh, data ranges. And so I'm going to click here and I'm going to insert an XY chart. So I'll come to insert and um, and I'll use, do the ones with uh, lines and markers. Um, I like using markers uh, even on a line chart um, because the markers tell me exactly where there's an actual data point. So, uh, so I'll select that and there's my XY chart. Looks great. And what I'm going to do now is show you a little trick here is I'm going to, um, and actually that, that was an XY chart and you see I don't have A, B, C, D across the bottom. An XY chart has to have numbers and if you are feeding it uh, text values like A through F over here, what happens is uh, it can't plot those. So in the X range, it'll just, it'll just say, okay, that's, that's point one, that's point two, that's point three, so here's one, two, three, and so forth across the bottom. Um, if you move your charts around, if I hold the Alt key down, you see it's going to snap to the cell boundaries. And that's a nice way, like if you have multiple charts and you want them to line up, 
And it works if you're resizing it too. I'll make the charts narrower. And you see, if I hold the all key down, it sticks to the, um, the cell boundaries. And then if I drag it, I can hold a shift key down and it will stay, it'll move either horizontally or vertically, uh, but it won't. Uh, it, it, and, and so that, that way it'll stay aligned somewhere or you know just all keeps it there. If I hold the control key while I drag it, I'm going to make a copy of that chart. And if I hold the alt key at the same time, that copy of the chart is going to be lined up with the uh, cell boundaries. And so this is nice because if, if you're making a dashboard or something and you need a bunch of charts all lined up, that's a, a, a great way of doing it. Um, so here's my, my XY chart of that data. And now I'm going to make a line chart of the same data just to just to show you some of the differences with the charts. Here's a line chart and you see it looks much the same except my line chart has my text labels across the bottom. Um, but other than that, it's 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 nominally the same as the of course it's smaller because I shrunk the uh, um, the X Y chart. But um, so that's that's a nice. <clears throat> OK, that's a comparison with, with that data. And you see um, nothing special about that data range. What if I have dates as my X values? So I'll make an, an XY scatter chart and with dates. And I also don't like the, the curved lines because the curved lines might make somebody think that, oh, there's a data point somewhere where it really isn't because the line follows an algorithm that's not based totally on all the data. So uh, I always switch to the, to the straight line. So on the XY chart, you see I have um, dates across the bottom. And uh, if I if I uh, control one, there's that again. For some reason, a recent update gives me very narrow little uh, format dialog over here. Now that's not a human recognizable date, 44200. But that's that's how Excel understands the number uh, for January of 2021, and then uh, it goes until then. And and the spacing is a normal kind of spacing that you'll get from an X Y scatter chart or any value axis is is a spacing of 20, um, which again also isn't really kind of a, a human friendly depiction of a date. Now if I come to a here and it's a I make a line chart though. Line charts are great when it comes to date axes. Um, now, the first thing it did, of course, is I have uh, one one row per date, and so it it just plots everything from that month. It, it decides uh, I have one row per month, and so Excel says, okay, I'm just going to plot each month separately. So one January, one February, but I, I have something on the fifteenth, so I have to change my axis. And so that axis option, I can come down. It's going to be a date axis because it's dates. I'm going to make my base unit days here. And now I have uh, 15th and this is actually the 15th of February. You see what it gives me um, by default, just with the span of data is it gives me, it starts on the first date, it ends on the last date, which is a little bit further than 11 June. And it gives me one, uh one label every week um, because they're not too close of course it had to rotate the axes so they don't overlap um but now what i can do i can make uh i can base my um my major unit the space in between my later labels to be one month and now uh i don't know what it just did um Oh, we changed it to seven months because oh, because it, it was uh, uh, seven days before. So now I have 15 January, 15 February, 15 March and so forth. It gives it to me uh, one month apart. And even though the um, the months are a different length, like I could try to do that on the X, Y chart and it would never work because it might work from 15 Jan to 15 Feb, but then it would go deeper into March just because there's different number of days in a month, but the line chart does that nicely. And I went into more detail on that than I meant to. But uh, so let's look at um, now what I have is some values here in the first column, numerical values. So I'm going to come over to my um, uh, XY chart 
and numerical values are what XY charts do very well at. One, three, five, seven, nine, eleven. Those are my um, X X values, and the Y values are the same as they have been. So there's no surprises there. Let's make a a line chart there. And so I want the first one to be my um, X values, and the rest to be my Y values. And I do this, and what do I get? No, that it's one, two, three, four, five, six. I have four series here. Um, Excel doesn't know the difference between these numbers and these other numbers over here. So it just plotted them all as Y values and it just used the, the counting numbers one, two, three, and so on for the X values. So this cell up here, which I call TLC, that really stands for top left cell. And so the top left cell, you have to sometimes make adjustments when when you're making certain types of charts. The XY chart automatically knows that it, if it's a number, it's still going to use it for the X values, but the, the, the line chart isn't quite as smart. So here I have the same X values. What I've done is I've taken this top left cell and I've blanked it out. There's nothing there. It's not it's not like a function that returns double quotes because that's that's not going to help you here. It's it's a totally blank cell. And now if I come back over, of course, an XY scatter doesn't care. It did it right the first time. And I'll just demonstrate that XY scatter. Yeah, boring. Um, but now let's let's take that same range and I'm going to insert a line chart. And you see now the line chart is smart enough to have used my my numbers on the X axis. Um, what's interesting is it's still treating them as text labels, but that that blank cell there um, was enough to tell Excel that that first column is special and the first row is special. So it's going to use the row as series names, which it guessed anyway, and it's going to use the column for for X values. And so uh, I'll show you a couple more funny tricks with um, uh, line charts and scatter charts. Here now I have the same dates that I had before, but they're out of order. I go January, March, February, May, April, June, which is kind of crazy, but sometimes data comes in funny. And I'm going to insert a line, uh, an XY chart. And just as expected, the the XY chart plots them in the, you know, it, it goes from the first point to the second point to the third in the order that they're listed here. So it goes back and forth on the horizontal axis. Um, if I make a line chart, a line chart, if those are dates as the X values, the line chart sorts them internally before it plots them. So you see it puts January and then February and then March, even though the order was different in the data. So that's that's kind of an interesting thing. And I have some tricks that I do with charts, probably not in, in the latter part of this presentation, but uh, make use of that. And so over here, um, now I, I've got my blank top left cell and I have my, my numbers out of order uh, for the X values. And if I go and I, I plot my my line chart, I mean my my X Y scatter chart. It does the same thing as with the dates. Um, it it just plots them in the exact same order they show. So it goes from one to five to three to nine to seven and so forth. Um, so, and then if I do the same thing with my line chart, here's how we see that the line chart doesn't treat them as numbers at all. It also, since they're not dates, it doesn't try to sort them first. And so it plots them in the order it sees them. So you see on my X axis, it goes one, then five, then down to three, then up to nine and down to seven and so forth. Um, and I have actually, I got in an argument online probably a decade ago with a physics teacher who said, well, this is stupid. Excel is, is, is counting these numbers wrong. And, and actually what was dumb in his case is he was doing an experiment where he went from a low temperature to a high temperature to a low temperature. And you know, instead of instead of the chart going up and down, it went up like this and then down like that because it didn't know that they were numbers. And, you know, he said, oh, this is stupid. And I said, well, that's a line chart. You want a scatter chart? And he, he argued with me a little bit, but um, 
Yeah. So anyway, I was talking about that top left cell. And let's say I have two years of quarterly data. And I go and I insert myself a line chart. And and actually, um, the, the things about the x-axis, they work the same for the line chart and for the um, and for the area charts and for the column charts. And if you turn the chart sideways, also for the bar charts. So the same things uh, hold true. Um, but so I'm just going to make a line chart. And so here we go. Yeah, nothing special. I just am, am showing the stuff and I have to read 2020 Q1, 2020 Q2. But now if I take that top left cell and I actually make it the top left two cells, and then I put a couple of blank row, uh, a couple of blank cells down below. When I plot that, I get some magic on my X axis. Excel now has made an axis that has two rows and it's got my quarters and underneath that it's got my years and it even puts a tick mark in between the, the major grouping. And that's pretty cool. You know, it, it really makes the, you know, the chart easier to read at a glance. Um, I mean, it's just dummy numbers anyway, but um, and. It works the same way if my top left cell covers two rows of series names. Watch, I have one alpha beta, two alpha beta, and I'm going to insert a line chart. And you see the series names are one alpha, one beta, two alpha, two beta. Um, so that that'll show up even better. I'm going to just put uh, data labels on 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 my uh, on my chart. So I'm going to label the point and I'm going to change the label colors. And so now you see it has taken that and, and turned turned them into um, nice uh, axis. I mean, nice series labels. Um, now, if I have a a, a, um, a set of X values like this and I try to make a, a scatter chart. Excel doesn't know what to do with that in a, in a scatter chart because it's looking for numbers and these are not numeric at all. So it just says, OK, first row, second row and so forth. So that's not so so good. But for a line chart, it's really nice. And you can actually um, if you want three rows of, of labels down there, you can use three. You can use four. Um, I had one project. My client needed five layers of those, and it worked perfectly. Um, yeah, and you can do the things in conjunction here. I have two rows and two columns of blank cells at the top left, and I can insert my my chart. And uh, there we go. You see, I have the the, the double uh, tiered x axis, and I have my my um, labels in the legend that are made up of. Uh, two cells each. So um, I'm going to do a little bit more here and then we're going to do some cool examples. So so let's say I make a chart, right? And I want to add data to the chart. So I'm just going to start out with with this data range and I'm going to insert a line chart. And here's my line chart and I'm going to hold my alt key down so I line everything up nicely and it all looks great and I have um, I have uh, three series and there are six points each. And now what I want to do is I want to copy that data and add it to my table. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it and I'm going to add it to my table. And so now my, my, and I call it a table, I'm adding it to my data. And I added it and my chart doesn't notice that it added it. And I'm going to take this other range here. I'm going to cut and I'm going to paste over here. Um, another shortcut uh, actually for um, for paste is if you cut or copy something, if you select the top left cell where you want it to go and you hit enter, uh, Excel puts puts it there without having to do control V. You can just do enter, which is uh, you know still one click but one button at a time, so it's easier. And you see my chart has no knowledge of the added data. Um, I didn't explain this before, but I will soon. When you select a chart, if the if the data comes from a nice rectangular range, it shows you 
where the data is in the in the worksheet. Same as any formula in the formula bar. And the series names are the red highlighted area at the top. The categories are the purple highlighted areas and the, the series Y values are the blue highlighted areas. Um, and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how you can edit chart data. This is the same data range as that and it's a column chart instead of a line chart, but it's it's basically the same. Um, there is a way that you can edit this data. Um, you can go to chart design and there's a select data or you can right click on your chart. I like to right click on, on things because then I don't have to go travel up to the top uh, with my mouse and then travel back again. Um, it probably saves me a few miles a week. Um, but anyway, so select data and you see now the select data tells me what the range is that um, uh, my chart uses. So what I can do is just select a bigger range if I want. And then I can say, and you see it's actually added another series over here. It, it was only alpha, beta, gamma, and now, and also over in this side, it, it added uh, the G and H that I had, had added before. Um, and that's fine. I really hate this select data source dialog. It makes me crazy. Um, and you'll see why in a minute when I talk about individual series. But so let me cancel that. Instead of just going up to select data, sometimes you have to, but if you don't have to, you're better off not. These highlighted areas out here, if I just grab the side of one and drag it, you see I've dragged the highlights and I let go, and now my chart plots where the highlights are, not where the highlights were. And if I drag by the corner, I can extend it. So now I go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and I can extend it one more time and include Delta, and there you go. Those highlights are one of the best things about a chart. Um, if it's in the same sheet as, as the data, if it's in a different sheet, it, you can't do that. And also, if it's a nice rectangular range, if, if for some reason um, one of my series uh, doesn't work out exactly right, or if they're out of order, um, like, like if, I, if I were to go to select data and take this delta and I, for some reason I wanted to move it up, now that's going to break um, the data range. In fact, you, you can even see here, chart data range, the range is too complex to be displayed, blah, blah, blah. And we've all seen that it's a pain in the neck and now i come over here and i select the chart and it still selects that well that's interesting i wonder what happens um i think because i canceled out of select data so if i move it up yeah i must have canceled so i say okay now when i select my chart it doesn't highlight the whole data range um but i can still use that trick um, let's say I want to just change the data for one particular series instead of all of them. You see that um, if I select the whole chart, it's all selected. If I select one series, I can use those highlights to drag that down and to drag that down. And now you see all of a sudden the blue um, columns have two more data points and the other ones don't because I didn't, I didn't uh, make them match. And um, um, and when I select the whole chart, I don't see what the whole data range is anymore. And if I go to select data, uh, it's too complex to, to be displayed. Well, to me, that's not too complex, but you know. Um, uh, but what I can do is I can come up here to, to beta. Um, First of all, if I, I wish I could make this dialog bigger. Um, you see, even if I select beta, you see all the the categories are 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 listed in the in the um, the dialog, because in a line chart or a column chart, the <clears throat> the same x values that you use for one series you use for all of them. So if you change it once, you change it for all of them. But now the beta. You, you click on edit and now I can come up here and um, change the uh, 
the range that um, my data is in. So I'll hit tab to go to the next thing and now I can select that whole column of data instead and I'll say OK. And we see now that the orange ones have filled out the whole range. Um, but what I'm going to do for the gray one is I'm going actually the other way that you can edit a single series is I can look up in the series formula right up here and you see I have uh, the gray one selected. It's the third series in the chart. Uh, for some reason, I don't have a legend. Um, and you see it, the, the way the series is, I have four different arguments in there. And the first one is, is this sheet cell E2, which is the series name. You can see it's, it's highlighted in red. It's a series name. The next item is the X values, B3 to B10. And the, the third item is edit series data, E3 to E8. It only goes to E8, and I can see that it only goes to E8 here. And I could drag this little thing by the corner if I want, or I can even just come up here in the series formula and change that. So I'll, I'll change it to E10, and I'll hit enter, and it will update properly. Um, a lot of people don't know you can edit that series formula right there. Um, uh, I can do other things like, um, well, in fact, if I want to add that that fourth uh, piece of data, what I can do is I'm going to just copy this series formula. So I copied it and I'm going to hit the escape key and I'm going to select the chart here and I'm going to paste here. I'm going to write my own series formula for the next series and it's going to be column F. So everywhere it was column E before, I'm going to make it column F, column F. And if you accidentally delete a, a dollar sign in the formula, Excel will go back and put it in there. Uh, Excel enforces absolute referencing for chart source data. And I'm going to change the last item, which is the, the order of the series in the chart, the plot order. I'm going to change that to four. And I'll hit enter. And now there's my, my four series that I added. Oop, I goofed up. Oh, because it says FE2. So if I scroll way over to cell FE2, it, it will be the um, um, the series name. And of course, now I select the whole chart and it doesn't show up because I messed up FE2. So if I change that to F2, now my, my series name is here and all my chart is, is right there. So anyway, that's how you extend the data range when you've added data to the, the cells on either side of it. Um, I'm going to just do a couple of things quickly here about tables. My first question to everybody is, and you don't even need to uh, uh, type it in there, um, do you use tables? And uh, um, Celia uses them, and I hope the rest of you don't. Uh, to those of you who don't, my other question is, why not? And I'll show you uh, the same thing again. So what's a table? A table is a data range that has special magical properties. It's got some fancy formatting, but better than the fancy formatting is it has tools that help you manipulate the data right there. You can sort, you can filter in the table. Um, if you sort, it makes you sort the whole row. So you never get a, a situation where somebody uh, sorted part of their data set and now um, the month label doesn't match up with the revenues for that month because they 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 messed up their sort and Excel tries to ask you if you want to use the whole range not just the, the what you selected for your sort but um, so anyway how do you create a table there's a couple of ways uh, first of all you select the range or if it's surrounded by blank rows and columns you just select one cell you can come up here and it says format as table. You're not formatting as a table, you're converting it to a table that has formatting, but that's what Microsoft named it. And right from there, you can even pick what kind of formatting you want to use. Um, another way to do it is on the insert um, tab, you insert a table. And again, you're not inserting a table, you're converting a range into a table. But again, that's what they decided to call it. Um, but even the best way, and there, here's another shortcut, and, and it's one that I use all the time, is control T. And what happens, you do control T or you do any of the other things, is 
it, it shows you the, the range it thinks you want, and it says, here's the range right there, and it says, my table has headers, and my table does have headers, alpha, beta, gamma, and I say, okay, and click. And you see what it did is it added this formatting, um, and this is the default formatting. Um, once you have a table, you can change that as much as you want. Um, so, and what it does, it doesn't like a blank cell. So this is going to cause us problems making a line chart if we have numbers in that first column. But the other properties of a table are so great that it doesn't matter. So it doesn't like a blank cell in the header row. So it, it just calls it column one. And, you know, I can call it something else. I can call it uh, categories. So I'm just going to do that. And that's that. Um, you have a table here and table design. It's a good idea to name your tables, give them a, a meaningful name in the context of your model, um, because there's ways of referencing that table in formulas and so forth. And if you give it a meaningful name, then you can read the formula and know what it's talking about. So I'm just going to call this demo table. Um, and that's fine. That's what it's called. And uh, you have all these different formats that you can apply. If you use Power Query, you probably recognize uh, this format because that's how Power Query, uh, that's the format that Power Query uses. And you know, there's, there's various kinds that are uh, more or less ugly. And I don't like any of those. So I have a special button in my, my little software here that uh, applies just a, a, a more refined um, table style, which doesn't assault the retinas. Um, I didn't mention control L. Um, tables were first uh, introduced in Excel 2003. Um, so that was you know almost 20 years ago. And they were not called tables then, um, they were called lists. And so control L was the shortcut they used to uh, insert a list. And then when 2007 came out and they called them tables, they had control T, but they kept control L as well. So control L would do the same thing. So anyway, here's my table. And in addition to the sorting and, and so forth, um, when you change the number of rows or columns in the table, any formulas that refer to that table will update accordingly. And that includes the formulas in a chart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a chart and let's come back over here and we'll we'll insert a line chart again. OK, so here's my line chart and we don't need we don't need my crib notes over here anymore. So I'm just going to cover them up with the chart and now watch that chart. I'm going to cut this data. I'm going to click over here. I'm going to say enter and watch what happens to the table and watch what happens to the chart. You see the table now has expanded to include the data because I, I added it to a cell that touched the, the, the bottom row of the of the table. And since the formula, since the chart was based on that table, it's still based on that table, however big the table gets. And we'll do it again with this. Um, another shortcut, somebody sh mentioned this in the chat back a long time ago, Control asterisk uh, will select the whole range, the whole contiguous current range uh, that the active cell is in. So I did Control asterisk to select the um, the new column I want to add, and I'll cut it, and I'll come up here and I'll enter, and you see the table again has expanded this time by a column because the new data was added right next to it, and the chart now includes that data in the chart. So so here we go. Uh, I was going to spend a half hour on this and I spent almost my whole hour here. Um, I hope nobody regrets that I did. Um, so anyway, that's one important reason you should use a table. Um, when Excel came out with lists in 2003, when I saw that this happened and how easy it was to make a dynamic chart that grew with your data, I never used an earlier version of Excel again. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to. Um, uh, John, can I just ask before yes. you move on? Someone was asking about uh, the TLC cell. Now we cannot use that trick uh, if we are using tables, right? Yeah, so so what I would do in this case 
it, it, let's say that these are are, are numeric. Um, where where you usually see the problem is is if they're uh, like years, so two thousand, and I'm just gonna um, if I hold control while I drag this, it will actually drag this drag a series. So you see it a lot when you have ooh come on Excel, I, I let go of the it's control key too soon. Um, so so here's the case: if, if I try to make my line chart here, there's going to be a problem. See, because I have all of my data is down here, except for the year, which is way up there. And I didn't want that to happen. And I mean, what you could do, of course, is delete that. And and now the colors are all wrong because alpha should be the blue one and beta should be the orange one. Um, the thing to do is just. Select just your Y values in the series names. And insert your line chart. And now you see it just goes one, two, three, four, five, whatever. And you can do this in a couple of different ways. You can select this and come up to select data and edit your horizontal axis data label range and, and drag it like this and say OK. Or you can. You can't do anything with the highlights, which is my preferred way of doing this with charts. But you see up here in the series formula, I have my series name. And then I have a, a missing argument and then I have my Y values. I'm just going to come up here, click in between those two commas. And select my X values. And you see it, it, it gives me something that looks funny. Uh, it, this is um, part of the structured uh, uh, reference notation that you get with tables. Um, and uh, if you had another hour, I would talk about that, but I'll, I'll hit enter. And you see it, it changed cat period to the range that refers to cat period. And now I have my X values at the bottom. So it's it's a minor inconvenience, uh, which um, doesn't make the table any less convenient overall to use. So um, I think I'll probably only have time to do a few examples unless uh, yeah, we, uh, we have time. That's uh, the, time. until seven. Uh, if you want to get how much time that, you need 10, to 15 minutes more, that's fine. Okay, I mean, well, we usually we usually schedule for uh, around 90 minutes in total, but I also took a lot of time for uh, announcements at the beginning, and it's not a rigid. So well, yeah, and then schedule, so took like free. three whole minutes of my time. So <laughs> 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 just kidding. Um, all right, so what I'll do, I'm glad you asked that too, because I I, I was thinking about it. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to close this and um, uh, let me find my uh, other file. I got a file called chart tricks if you downloaded the, the zip file and there's oh, actually no, I forgot. Sorry. Oh, I ended up not. Uh, OK, yeah. um, so why don't you uh, post the, the link in the chat and um, so there's there's actually uh, two versions of this file. There's one that just has the tricks that I'm going to do here, and there's one that has all the tricks worked out. So even if I don't get to all of them, you can you can try to reverse engineer it. Um, yeah. Another thing that I, I usually say at the beginning and I forgot, if you have a question about uh, my presentation or or maybe any question you think I can answer, if you send me an email, and say, hey, you know, I saw you at the Toronto meetup um, and I had a question. If you if you start out, I mean, I try to answer all my emails um, except the, the spam ones. And if you say that you were at one of my my uh, presentations somewhere, I I have a much greater chance of answering soon. Um, so if, if you if you see one of these examples that I didn't get to and you wonder about it, um, I mean, some of them are, are are in my blog and I can give you the link or else I can, I, you know, give you a quick explanation. But um, so anyway, yeah, I mentioned and the, sorry to interrupt and the yeah. files will be sent uh, when I send an email. I, I always send an email after the session a couple of days after uh, when I upload the video to YouTube, sending the link to the recording. I'll send the files as well then. So 
people can get them. Right. Uh, but I can I can try to share them there in the chat while you continue your presentation as well. OK, um, so um, let's see. So I talked before about um, um, and this example covers a whole bunch of different weird stuff in Excel. Um, if, if you're making a dashboard, you will probably have a few charts that you want them all to be formatted the same. And um, you you want to um, line them up nicely and so forth. So I already told you that. Um, OK, so there's one one trick here. Um, this is the data for company A and it doesn't say company A on it. And, and I forgot to do that, but you can link that to that cell just if you select it and type equals and make sure that the equals shows up here in the formula bar. And if you click on the cell that says company A, Excel will build you that formula and I'll say enter. And now here's here's the, the title that I wanted in this chart. So what I want to do now is make a duplicate copy of this chart that's exactly the same for company B. And so, as I said, you use control while you drag it to make a copy and you hold alt down so that the copy lines up with the um, the cell boundaries and so now i have a new a new chart the, the 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 benefit of doing it this way is i have just one chart to begin with and i i do all my formatting on this one chart i make this one chart perfect um and I want all my charts to look at like this, you know, otherwise if I just made three separate charts and then I had to make them all look the same and get the same, uh, the same like I, I, in order to show the grid lines behind there, this this is gray with a certain percent transparent and all of that. And in order to do all that stuff, it's just a pain in the neck to recreate time and again. But again, if I make a copy of that chart, I'll drag it and there we are. And now uh, I need that to say uh, company B, but that's cell B2 was where company A was. So cell B8. So let me let me change that to B8. OK, that updated. Now I need my chart data to update. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on here and drag. And of course, it didn't it didn't bring my target and actual down, but that doesn't matter because they're the same. I, I if I wanted to, I could change that. And so there's that. And I look at that and look at that. All my careful formatting got destroyed. And so before I do anything else, before Excel forgets what I did, I'm going to use my favorite shortcut, Control Z, and get this stuff back. The reason that happened is anytime you apply custom formatting to your chart, um, Excel tries to associate that custom formatting with the data range that you're plotting. So this, this light gray is associated with, with this range here, uh, with the actually with the target range. And the, 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 the dark line is associated with the actual. And when I dragged it down, um, the black was associated with here, but now my data was down here. So it wasn't custom anymore. Excel said, OK, we're going to put the default format back and that screws up a lot of people. And the reason for this is there's a proper there, there's a, a setting in Excel that says properties follow data point. What does that mean? I don't know what it means. Sometimes I think it means the opposite of what it says. Sometimes I just think it doesn't say anything meaningful at all. But what it is is that I can go to file and they bury it, but file and options and I go to advanced and I drag about halfway down and it says chart. And there's a thing here right here it says properties follow chart data point for current workbook. There's also one properties follow chart data point for all new workbooks, but I don't want to apply it everywhere because I'm afraid that. Sometimes it works. The way it's supposed to and I don't even realize it because it didn't make me angry, but if it's going to make you angry, uncheck that box and come back to it, say OK. Now we're back here. And usually what I do is I, I then I change all my data and then I go back and I recheck it, which is it's a pain. It's a pain to get to and you forget the first time. 
Um, but so let me let me drag my data down and let's watch the chart. Make sure it doesn't change. And it didn't change. OK, that's great. Uh, so now I have company A and company B. Um, and actually in my program, I did put a little uh, checkbox here so I can click that and now it's back the way it was. So I could have just come here instead of going all the way to file uh, settings, advanced chart, blah, blah, blah. Um, OK, so that's that's great. Um, the formatting all synchronized, but you see the, the the numbers. I still can't compare one chart to the other because this chart goes up to 1600. This only goes up to 1050. So it looks like company B had higher actuals than company A, but that's false. That's uh, really 1025 and this is probably more like uh, 13, yeah, 1350. So that didn't work right. What I need to do is get the same axis scale on both charts. And I can do that, of course, if I select my axis and do control one, uh, this thing opened up too narrow again. I can come over here and I can manually adjust these things. But then if the ch if the data changes, I have to go back in here and, and manually adjust them again. Uh, and I don't want to do that. So what I need to do is I need to plot the same data, the same extreme data in both charts. The, the reason this went up to 1600 is because this value here is close enough to 1400 that Excel wanted to put a whole additional uh, um, tick mark above it. And this one only went up to 1050 because Excel didn't want it. So I want to plot 16, uh, I want to plot not 1600, but 1350 in the right hand chart. And I want to, you know, just make sure I take care of that. So what I'm going to do, I have this little area over here called dummy. And so I'm going to for my max, I'm going to say equals max and I want to use the maximum of any range that has a value to plot. So I'm going to do the maximum of this range and I'm going to um, hold the control key and select this range. And so here's the maximum. 1350. OK, that's great. And for minimum, I could do the same thing equals min. But again, now I'm looking at these charts and um, I'm using a bar chart. And one thing about bar charts is they what encodes the value is the whole length of that bar. So I don't want to cut the bar off. You see, these bars have cut off and it looks like the target for 2019 is twice as big as 2017. But it's only 100 more. So that is 1000 versus 900. So really what I want to do is I want to make sure that axis starts at zero. So for my minimum, I'm going to type in zero. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this range. And I could just come over and paste it on the chart, but I don't like pasting. Just control V on a chart because it is too easy. Not to get what you want. So up here on the home tab. I'll come to paste special. And you get this little thing. And see what it was going to do is add points to one of my series. I don't even know which one, but it wanted to add new points. So I'm going to add new series and the categories are in the first count of min and max. That's fine. Who cares? Uh, series name in first row. Yep. Dummy and this replacing existing categories. If I did that, it would change 2017 and 2018 to min and max. So I don't want to do that. And I'll say OK. And it added. This is the data that it added. Which is my zero and the maximum for all the data in the chart. And now that's still copied, so I'm going to come over here. And again, I, if I do Alt ES, which is my shortcut for paste special from Excel 2003, uh, uh, new series, series name in first row, and OK. And you see now, it, it in order to plot this data, it had to start at zero, which this one does, and it had to end at 1600, which this one does. So now, in both these cases, now, now I can compare company A and company B directly. I still have this series in the way, so I'm going to do control one and format it and I'm going to format it with no marker. And I'm going to format it with no line, so I hit it. And now remember I told you about how F4 doesn't work to repeat the last thing with charts. It does work with colors, so if I do F4, the color of that line will change to no color. And I, uh, the marker thing doesn't. If I change the marker color, F4 would do that. But changing the marker style 
doesn't. So you have to do that manually. But now, see here, I've got I've got um, charts that that work nicely. And if any of these these the data changed, um, like let's say that was really fifteen hundred. Um, well, in fact, that was the wrong one. Let's say sixteen fifty. Now, both of the the charts update for the the maximum the new maximum value in the data range. So. Um, that's a good example because we covered a whole lot of different things. Um, Celia, what's my time? I don't want to keep anybody here past bedtime. Did you freeze or did I? Um, well, I'm going to go ahead. Sorry, with my... sorry I was muted. <laughs> well, you weren't just muted. Your, your, uh, your, your video froze. OK, uh, 10 more minutes. OK, 10 more minutes. We'll go with that. Then OK, OK. Yeah, so but don't feel too, don't feel in a rush. I mean, I don't like uh, present in a rush and it's uh, you are no, it's, doing... it's, it's my fault for taking for talking too long. On, no, on... no, because every minute is precious from uh, what you're teaching us. So nobody is obliged to to stay uh, past the time they want to. So people who want to stay and as long as you want to keep right. teaching us, uh, we are glad to learn from you. OK, OK. So anyway, I'm talking about tips and tricks. A lot of my tricks have to do with hidden data in the chart. You can see that the, the points are still in the chart, but you can't see them because I hid them. You know, it's all smoke and mirrors, right? It's all magical incantations. And so here's an example. Um, I have a stacked column chart and uh, I don't only want to show the value of each um, individual bar I want to show the value the total of each stack and I can calculate that easily enough um, I could go equals sum and uh, so it's the sum of this here Another shortcut for you people who don't know this. See that little black square at the bottom? That's called the fill handle right next to my cursor. If I double click on that, it will fill down as far as there's data next to it. So here's my sum total. And so now here we go. Um, I can't use any data labels that are in the chart because they're already used for the individual values. So what I need to do is add another series that I can put the totals on. So I'm going to use my little trick with the dragging the um, the highlight, and now here is what I'm going to use for my my um, totals. But see, I don't want it stacked on top. That's not right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the series, and I'm going to come down here to change series chart type. And this is a nice little dialog. First, it's nice because I can resize it if I want. And it's also nice because it lists all the series, it lists the chart type, and it also lists the, the axis. So if I want to put a series on a secondary axis for whatever reason, and I could do that with this one, and it's and then I could make it invisible and it'll be on the secondary axis, and then there's problems with that. That's not what I want. What I want to do is just make it a regular line chart. And you see from the preview that now it's exactly as tall as the top of the stack. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that and I'm going to come over to the little um, plus sign icon next to the, um, the chart. Um, inside of, uh, Microsoft, they call these things Skittles, I guess like the little chewing gum things. But anyway, so I'm going to click on that and I'm going to put uh, data labels. And in fact, I'm going to just make sure it puts them above. And look at that. Those are the data labels I need. All I have to do is hide the evidence that I'm that I'm tricking anybody. So I come back over here, control one, find the line, change it to no line. And there I've added my my data, my saw my totals on top of the stack chart. Um, all right, I have time for this one. What I want to do is is put a band in my chart that shows the target range. So here's all my data, and I want to make it easy for somebody to see whether I'm on target or not. 
and my my um, my target is the minimum is 35. So in here, my maximum is 75. And so what I'm going to do is insert a column because what I need to do for this trick, I'm going to use stack columns. And so I need a minimum for the bottom one, and then I need a span. So I'm going to say, or I'm just going to call it target. And this equals that minus that. And I'm just going to drag this whole thing down. And so I have my target range here, which is actual, and I want to add minimum and target to the chart. Um, yeah, if you just select the series, you can't you can't do as many things. So I have to select outside of there. I can select the plot area or the chart area, and now I can take this and drag it as far as I want. And oh, you know what? This there we go. And this see it, it made it into a series instead of just copying the value. Um, so now I have my my minimum and my target. And what I need to do is uh, right click, change series chart type, and minimum I need to change to a stacked column, and target I need to change to a stacked column. And you see that's sort of getting to where I want it to be. So I'll say OK. And uh, I don't want people to, to see this area down below. So I'm going to take that and I'm just going to format it to have no fill. So now I have floating columns up here. This is my target range. And now I just need to do a little formatting. I want I want the 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 band to be solid, which means I don't want a gap in between my bars. So I'm going to change my gap width to zero. And look, they went all the way across. And that's first of all, that's kind of a, a dark color. And second of all, I want to see my grid lines underneath. So I'm going to do a little magic with the formatting there. So my fill, um, first of all, I'm going to use like a, a gold color and I'm going to use a fill. Let's see if 50% if does it. 50% might just do it. It's light enough that it doesn't detract. It doesn't take attention away from my data, but it, it highlights the range, the target range, and it also shows me my grid lines underneath. So it's a it's a, a cute little trick. Let's see. I still have a few minutes and uh, um, yeah, you could use it for a confidence interval or any kind of upper or lower limits. Um, great stuff. Um, I'm going to I want to. Put a special format on the minimum and maximum in this series. So uh, I can do that easily you know, using conditional formatting in the worksheet. Like, so uh, I'll make a new rule and my new rule, I'll use a formula and the formula is going to be equals this F4 key to get rid of that equals um, the max of the whole range. And I'm going to keep my absolute dollar signs in there. And if that's the case, I'm going to, I'm going to make it, uh, we're going to fill it with with in fact let's 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 use that blue and i'll say okay so there's the maximum down here and i can do the same thing for minimum it's it's a new rule uh use a formula equals the cell f4 three times equals min of that whole range uh and of course my fat fingers I uh, missed the M key there and, and now I'll format it so I'll use. The orange color. Um, OK. I've been using Excel for. 30 years, I don't know, and I still make mistakes when I'm typing formulas, so I, I have my min and my max are, are displayed here and if I if I were to change a value, you know, if, if that becomes 27, now that's the minimum and that's fine. Um, what I want to do, I can't use conditional formats is grayed out here. It's disabled. 
I can't do it in the chart. But what I can do, again, with smoke and mirrors, I can add a point to, to hide um, the minimum and, 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 and show that color. And the maximum, the same thing, I can put a bar there of that color. How do I do that? I'm going to add some series. So I'm going to do uh, equals if um, this equals uh, I'm on max of the whole range. I'll use F4. Then I will show C3. Otherwise, I'm going to just use my old NA, which uh, that's the NA error. And the thing about an NA error um, it doesn't work exactly the same here, but if it were a, a line chart or a scatter chart, it wouldn't put a marker there. So I'm just going to do that. You see, the only value I see here is the, the max. And in fact, I'm going to copy that formula because what I'm putting here is almost exactly the same. I'll change max to min, say enter, double click the fill handle to fill it down. So now you see Here's the data that I'm going to plot. So I'll select my chart. I'll drag the thing across. And now you see I get a bar here that corresponds to the maximum and another bar that corresponds to the minimum. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to format. And you see over here where I have series overlap of minus 27. That means there's 27% of the width of the bar is the unoverlap or the white space in between these two bars. And so if I if they change that to zero, it means they're going to be touching. And these aren't touching, but that's because there's a blue bar that doesn't isn't plotted in between. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll change my overlap to 100%, and that means the blue and the orange fit 100% in front of the gray bar that they're showing. And um, I can I can even make that a little bit better. I can do um, data labels, and instead of in, in and I'll, I'll do this one too. Data labels. It put it above, which is the default for that. And now I'm going to select my data label, and I'm going to click over here. And what am I going to show? I'm going to show the series name, and I'm not going to show my value. And I rarely use leader lines. And just to really make it work, I'm going to use the same color. No, I didn't want to fill. I want the same color text as the um, the bar, and I'll bold it. And now this label, I'm going to again use a series name, not value, or and none of those leader lines. And I'll make it blue, and I'll bold it. And there's my conditional uh, conditionally formatted chart. And uh, Let's say that, uh, oh, we counted wrong in February. It's really uh, 45. Boom, there it is. Or let's say, no, you know, really in November it was also 45. Because they both equal the max, I get a blue bar for both of them. And if uh, April was really only 27, I get an orange bar for both of them. Um, <clears throat> you notice I'm using blue and orange instead of maybe green and red. <clears throat> and the reason for that is because uh, something like I don't know, six or eight percent of the male population and maybe half a percent of the female population has uh, a problem that with, with their color vision and it makes it difficult to um, <clears throat> distinguish between red and green but the blue and the orange colors that that are used here and in fact they're the first two colors in the default Office 2013 and, and later um, color palette, um, those are more readily distinguished by people with uh, the most common forms of uh, color vision deficiency. Um, in fact, if you were to make a insert a um, an Excel waterfall chart, the colors it would give you. Uh, in fact, you can see that even though I didn't select any data. For increase, it's not green, it's blue. And for decrease, it's not red, it's orange. So um, the, the data visualization community has moved to that kind of standard, and, uh, and so has Microsoft. <clears throat> um, OK, well, I've gone beyond the 10 minutes, Celia. So um, if you have anything to do to wrap up,
go ahead. If not, I'll just keep going. I, I, I'll talk all night. Uh, you know what? We didn't uh, uh, talk about this, but if you are up to that, I would really like a kind of a walk through your add-in because uh, some people were asking, what kind of Excel is that? <laughs> oh, what kind of Excel and is I, that? I think all uh, right. at least some of the most, uh, maybe the more popular ones or the ones you feel more proud about or well, the features I, you think are more used. It would be great just to have kind of a, a, a little walk through your add-in and, and let people know where they can get it if they are interested. All right. Well, uh, again, it's on peltiertech.com and, you know, follow the links for my software. I have two, um, two software packages that um, I sell on my website right now. Uh, one of them is Peltier Tech Charts for Excel. Um, and... Uh, what it does is it has a whole bunch of custom charts. In fact, some of these uh, aren't available yet in the commercial version because I built them and I'm still testing them. Um, and it has a bunch of other things you can you can do: formatting, uh, exporting, um, all kinds of all kinds of handy tricks that are hard to do otherwise. Um, and then I have another one which I use mostly for um, um, preparing. Uh, you know, you know some for mostly formatting, uh, but I use it for preparing um, examples. Like if I if I need to show an example on short notice, like you just did to me here, uh, and I, I want to show how to do something with a column chart, um, I can or or with a line chart. Let's do a line chart. Um, what I can do is I can click this button and it will insert. Oh, that wasn't right. Uh, let me do it here. Um, what it does is it finds the uh, the data closest to where my cell was, my active cell was up here. But if I if I get rid of that chart and I come down here, I'm far away from everything, that should insert a new sheet with a line chart. And so here, th if, th if this data looks familiar, it's what I've been using all along in examples. Um, and, and so now I didn't have, I get frustrated when I, you know, it used to be I'd be in front of a crowd and I'd have to first invent some stupid data. So people would watch me type A, B, C, and then type all these numbers and stuff. And uh, so, and, and then I'd have to make a chart. Um, so I did that just so it'll insert this and I can now explain some kind of other function on this chart that I didn't have to spend 10 minutes typing uh, the data in because you always do it worse when people are watching. Um, and, uh, Let's see. I thought of something else that I wanted to say, but I guess I won't. Now, among the features in my, well, in the toolbox, I, I added some stuff like, let's say I have um, other data over here somewhere. Um, and so I have a chart selected, and now I want to plot that data. The chart's going to look the same because it's the same data. I didn't take the time to do it. But what I can do is select the chart and, and click on select data and now I can select a different range for that chart and see now the, the highlights went over here so that's what my my chart is is plotting now um let's see so that's one neat thing it does or let's say I want to put that chart in a certain place and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover a range with a chart so I'm going to cover this range with the chart and I'll say okay and there it is and so you know that's another nice way of making a, a dashboard quickly. Or let's say the chart is located here and I want it centered within the grid of cells there. I can I can center it and see now it's centered there. And, and then I think to myself, no, no, I don't want it centered. I want it to fill that whole range and I'll click here and it'll fill that whole range. Um, the uh, formatting that I applied before, the, the nice borders, um, I'll, I'll select the range and I'll click that and it, it, sh it put those those borders there. You can see it put the ins, inside borders as well. Um, I have a chart here and I want to highlight this data range for the chart. You see there's there's no formatting here at all. I'll select that and I'll click this button and and now it, it has put permanent highlights there that match the highlighting that you see in the chart. So that's um, um, let's see and another thing that happens if I make a bar chart. OK, I'll insert a bar chart and 
uh, that's in here, and I'll go to bar chart, and you see it goes ABC from the top down, but in my chart, it goes ABC from the bottom up, and that's backwards. And, you know, I have a blog post that explains what happens, and it's, it's perfectly logical, even if it's wrong, that that's how Excel does it. But in my toolbox, I have a, a button here to flip the bar chart around. Click, now it goes ABCDEF and does it down instead of up. And in fact, if I if I were to use my built in button here, um, you know, so bar chart for all of these, there's different styles of each chart that you can make. And so I want a clustered bar chart. But if I decided to make a different one, you see a clustered one is the one that that is selected. But let's say I want to make a stack bar one. So it's going to make a stack bar chart. First of all, stack bar chart is now the default up in the, the button in the ribbon. Um, because maybe I want to make a whole bunch of the same kind and I don't want to keep having to drag down the menu to do it. But also you see the chart it made is different than a regular bar chart because first of all, A, B, C, D, E, F, they're in the right order to begin with. And also there's no sense making the, the bar chart short and wide like this. You might as well spread it out a little bit. So the default size for the ones that my program makes uh, is, is kind of reversed from the 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 standard layout um and in fact i can i can apply a different size i can make it a little smaller or, or i can make it a lot smaller or i can adjust the font sizes in the in the chart with these buttons and um i can i can even customize using this complicated dialog what the different sizes are for the different uh fonts in my chart and so forth um let's see if if, if my uh legend isn't right well first of all i to my other program, I have some right click stuff here. So I can put that legend at the right of the chart just by right clicking on the legend. And now that legend is a little bit, there's more white space in there than you need. So what I can do is condense my legend like this. Um, and that's fine. Now, the other thing I can do with the legend is um, if I right click on it, I can, I can, let's say I want it to line up with the top of the, of the plot area. So I can align it to the top of the plot area. Um, you know, I can do various things like that easily. A lot of simple formatting and, and and so forth. Now, to show you some of the capabilities of charts for Excel, uh, let me just, um, uh, let's see. I'm going to insert a, a new blank worksheet which has some sample data for uh, some of these chart types. So I'll come over here. Probably the most popular chart type that people want that Excel doesn't do, it does now but not well, is a waterfall chart. And so here I have a waterfall chart. I have waterfall chart data, you know, I have a start value. I don't have a finish, but that's because I let the, the program calculate it. Um, and then I have some various up and down things. And I'll come over here, waterfall, and I'll just click on waterfall. And up pops a dialog, and it's got a bunch of options. You can choose uh, vertical and, and horizontal. And in fact, the vertical and the, the horizontal is something that I've recently added that isn't available yet, but it will be soon. And there's a whole bunch of other different options, uh, but basically it, it, it figures out the chart range the same way as Excel does. And I'm just gonna, and you can have different, you know, there's different color schemes. There's the default one that I have, which is still green for up and, red for down, but uh, let's let's use the office version, which is gray for the standard bars and, and whatever. And I'll click OK, and we're going to put it in a new worksheet. Some of the charts you can put it in the active sheet, but you know we have to add a bunch of columns of data to calculate stuff, and it's going to collide with other data in this worksheet. So I'm just going to put it there, and I go click. And here's my waterfall chart. I started at 500, I went up, I went down and down, way down over here, and then up, and then here's my, my finish. And all the data is, is here. There's a few different options. Um, I can get rid of those labels if I want, or I can put them all above the bars or, or center them or whatever. But generally, you put them according to the sign of the bar, and that's that's how that's done. If, if the data changes anywhere, like say, oops, um, uh, let's say that minus 300 was a typo. It was really minus 150. Uh, in fact, let's not do 150 because that looks like the other one. Let's just say minus 100. 
and I'll, I'll say OK and I'll come back to my new chart and you see now it changed to 100. So it's it's dynamic with the data that you started with. Um, let's see what else can it do? It can do different kinds of charts like stacked waterfall. Another thing that it'll do, I'll do it with the stacked waterfall and here I want an intermediate subtotal. And so I'm just going to come over here. I'm going to come under waterfall. I have a bunch of different types of waterfall and I want a stacked one and um, let's do a vertical one and we'll do it on a new worksheet and bang and here's my stacked waterfall and you see I have an intermediate total and it keeps track of the individual series um, and in, in some cases if I have negative and positive you can't stack negative and positive data together right it doesn't work so it just gives you a, a, a one uh, you know kind of a, a, a well a, a different format for for mixed data there um, one way around that is something called a split bar waterfall, which is this here and it, it uses this is the same data, but what it does is the. Individual floating bars. Um, if you have positive and negative, what it does is it splits the bar in half and it puts the positive ones on the left side of that bar and the negative ones on the right side of that bar and. Uh, um, and it ends up looking like this and I'm just going to assume that's cool. And we'll go bang and here we are. So you see before I couldn't show that somewhere up and down. I could only show that it was mixed, but here I can show these are all up. These are all down. This is mixed up and down and this is mixed up and down. And so that's and and those are waterfall types that Excel doesn't do, but even the, the standard waterfall. Um, Mine does it better. Um, I do box plots. If you ever have to do box plots, this is just some kind of crazy data and I'm just going to insert a box plot and we're going to do that and you see it shows outliers um, and this is also it's dynamic with the data. Um, uh, if you need to know things like min and max of your range or if you need to know mean and standard deviation, this stuff is all here because it's used to calculate the chart. Um, you can change the the quartiles if if you want to compare it to um, your colleague that uses mini tab you just select something different and this is how mini tab would draw it or the default way that excel um, used to do uh, um, distributions quartiles percentiles um, you would select that now excel gives you a choice um, but only between n minus one and n plus one which is too complicated to explain what that means, but it doesn't give you the in between ones. Um, so there's box plots and there's just a whole bunch of different things, various kinds of dot plots. Um, you probably heard of dumbbell plots and lollipop plots, um, cycle plots. Um, actually, one nice thing about cycle plots is if I have just a regular old chart somewhere, um, and in fact, let me let me put a, a regular old chart somewhere uh, that's on my toolbox here. And I'll, I'll insert a line chart. And what a cycle plot does is it breaks the, the data up. Um, and so you will have each of these series will be in in its own section of the chart. So I'm going to take this and instead of just starting from scratch with the data, I could start from scratch with the data and create a cycle plot. Or what I can do is take an existing plot and convert it to a cycle plot. And I'll go click like that. And here's my cycle plot. So you see um, my alpha, my beta, my gamma now reside in different sections of the chart. So this makes it a little bit easier to, to see how each of those is doing if they happen to overlap a lot and, and, and obstruct the, the view of the other things. The, the original chart is still here, but um, the other chart is there. And you know, it's just thousands of different charts. Oh, and the the other thing it, it, I can show you with this. Um, I think I used it uh, once or twice in my demonstration. I can click this button and it will label the last the last point of each uh, series. And so there's my alpha beta gamma. It labels it with the series name. It gets rid of the legend. Um, it's better if you can put the labels right on the chart, right on the data instead of making people go back and forth to the legend. And then of course, well, that's not perfect, but I can just click on label colors and it applies the color of the series to the, the label text. Um, you know, those are just the kind of things that. 
lovely. <laughs> that it does. Um, let's say uh, I have a whole bunch of charts and I didn't set up dynamic charts and it's not in the table and I don't want to show all that data. Let's say I only want to show, um, uh, you know, down to um, row six instead of row eight. I can come here to edit formulas and I can just type in, I want to change eight and tab. I want to change it to six and I'll change the active chart only and see now it, it it changed all the series just by editing the form the, the uh, series formula. Um, and of course now because my my labels were on uh, F that they don't show up anymore. But um, uh, now let, let's suppose I had uh, I'm going to go back here. I'm going to change this around here. I'm going to select data like that. So now I'm only going to have two series in my chart. Um, I, I added this one because I use it all the time. It's going to find the last series in the chart and it's going to add one more. Bing. And then I still have to label it. And if I only select one series, it's just going to select. It's just going to label the ones uh, that one series. Uh, um, I, I added something new which isn't available yet, but you can label the first point instead. And see, it took the last label off and it put it on the first and and let's label color. So there's all this neat stuff. Um, a lot of it is is uh, even stuff that um, I don't know. Probably people buy it for two or three features, but you know everybody only uses uh, five percent of Excel. Also, every but everybody uses a different five percent. Um, let's see. The one other thing I was going to show, and this is a a, a trick in my. I mentioned it in my blog and then I, I wrote a, a utility and then I added it to the toolbox. So if I were to reconstruct this data range, you know, you have to go A and then type B and then so forth. But what I did is I set it up so that I can just drag and it will fill in the alphabet. Or I can uh, just put uh, alpha and it'll fill in the Greek alphabet. And what that does is, you know, you can come here to file and options in advanced and you scroll way down near the bottom and edit custom lists. There's lists in Excel. And so we have like the days of the week, both long and abbreviated months of the year, long and abbreviated. And then you can add your own custom lists. And what I did is I, I built a custom list manager. And so it looks like this and there's it shows you what the lists are that are active in Excel and then I have a few more that um, are stored in the program. So if I if I want Roman numerals, for example, I can add that and now I have Roman numerals in my um, it, it, as a custom list so I can start with I and let's see it's it's going to fight over does it want I I. It did. Look at that. It got it right. So I, I, I didn't know if it might have gone I, J, K, L because I also have the alphabet. But so um, just neat stuff. And uh, a lot of it is stuff that I use a lot. So I put it here and I offered it for sale for anybody who's who's interested. Um, you want to get this chart into uh, um, an email. I could just copy a picture of it and then I'll, I'll go over to my email and I'll paste it. And that's a picture of the chart now. Um, so it's just a bunch of stuff. Nice. So. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, everything, uh, both the presentation, uh, a lot of uh, you called it tips and tricks. There was a lot of uh, amazing thing I didn't know, things I didn't know. Uh, and uh, so I'm very, very thankful for your time, John, and uh, all the patience you put in and the care to explain everything so uh, detailed and uh, I'm sure other people also took value of it. If anyone wants to say something or ask uh, both in the chat or just turn on your mics, uh, please feel free to do so. I'm going to share my screen here where you can reach. Um, you can reach John Hi, F. Steve. Yeah, hi. Who is uh, speaking? Oh, Celia, it's me, Carlos. Hi, hey, Carlos, how are you? Nice presentation, John, again. Thanks, nice Carlos. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. 
my only question is, um, you know, when you click on the chart or any chart in Excel, is there is there a way or a shortcut in in order to get to those buttons that appear right next to the to the chart, like the plus sign, the filter? I like I don't know if there are. I mean, if there are, okay. it's something like yeah, I'm 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 clicking around here and it's not doing. I mean, it it's it's hard. The the newer uh, user interface is a lot harder to um, navigate than the old ones. Um, yeah. And yeah, no, it is, yeah. I, I've I've gotten. I mean, I'm I'm more of a mouse guy anyway, and and I know. Oh. Well, I mean, that's that's because I'm not a financial modeler. Um, but um, and that reminds me, the Alt F1 wouldn't work for a financial modeler to insert a chart because don't they pry that key off their keyboard? Because because if you just hit F1, it, it brings up help, and that that's just a delay that they don't want to deal with. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> Oh wow! Huh. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, I, I of course those people are crazy, but um, let's see. Uh, my yeah, if anybody if anybody knows what the keyboard shortcut could be, uh, would well, love to I, know it because I, I know uh, there's something to to get to the um, the task pane once the task pane is there, and I think it's just hitting F six. That's what I'm trying to right now. In fact, yes. F6, now you see that there's a little rectangle around chart You need to share your screen, uh, John, because oh. I took over just uh, oh, okay. a few minutes ago. Uh, so what I'm doing is, so I select, I, I, let's, let's just start from scratch. So I select the chart and I hit uh, it's control not sharing one. Yet. You're not sharing yet, sorry. It's not. Oh. Can you try again? Share content, click. Oh yeah, because I, I, I didn't tell it what to share. OK, uh, I got the red border around it, so I guess it's sharing. Yeah. So, so I select a chart and I go uh, control one. Yeah. And, and it pops up my um, task pane. And then the F6 key. Gets you to that point, yes. It's, it's, it's here uh -huh. somewhere. And I can, I can hit the left and right buttons. Now, this is chart options. Let's see. Um, uh, up and down and left and right do the same thing. So let's see if I if I do tab, where does that get me? Oh, OK, tab now I'm going downwards. So if I do shift tab, I'll go up. So here's the fill. But if I click it, so my arrow keys will, will do that. Now I do tab and I get down. So that I can. I don't know how to get to these Skittles. Um, yeah, Celia, w w would it be possible to show something to John? Maybe that's that's why I can explain the my my question because I well, think. Um, uh, let me yeah, let sure. me show something else though. Um, if you're within a chart, um, yeah, I can't share within, just in case. If Celia. you're within a chart, you can you can use your arrow keys to cycle among the different elements yeah. of the chart, and and so uh, I'm using the up arrow key to cycle among these things. Once I have a series selected or a series of data labels, I can, I can, and you have to use the control key while you're doing the arrows. If I do control and the, the right button, I'll select the first point, then the second point, then the third one and so forth. Or I can go backwards if I want. So you can navigate within the, the chart um, easily enough. And, and if my task pane is, is, is visible and I, and I'm navigating through that. You see the task pane changes to show the different item that I've just selected. Mm. Um, but but that's that's that, that's not convenient. And and I'm not sure how you select a chart without using a mouse. I guess yeah. You have if to, anybody finds out, it will be uh, all I, 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 I think there you'd have to come up here to um, uh, find and select and and the selection pane. And, and yeah. this, you, can, you know, so then I can I can F6 my way over there and then I can, you know, uh, tab around that, which is, you know, as you can see, it's very, it's very inconvenient. You better just use the mouse. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I understand why people don't want to, you know, and my problem is my mouse gets lost under the table, uh, under papers, and uh, I use a wireless mouse now, so I can't pull it out by the tail. But mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
All right. Um, uh, any other questions? Carlos did want to show something. Okay, Carlos. If you. Oh, oh well, the thing is that silly. I can't share my screen yet. On. Uh, oh, yet. okay. I see. Maybe okay. because I'm a guest. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Let me see. Yes, they promote you to. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Real quick. I think this might interest uh, everyone. So, John, I think at the beginning of the the talk, you said that you weren't a fan of the keyboard. I mean, you were you were not a fan anymore of the keyboard shortcut F11, right? So, uh, like making this into a new sheet, like this range, you make it into like if you press F11, yeah, and you make it own right. Well, right. I think this might change your mind because I just discovered this uh, last night, and I'll be really honest about it. So let me just delete this again. So the trick is, well, it's not a trick, it's, it's a feature of Excel, but I didn't know it. So you know how in Power BI, you can, like if you have, like if you use Zebra BI, you have like this highlighting effect, like if right. you just hold, 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 hold over on the, the, uh, the icon. Yes. Or if you do like, for example, just a native chart of Power BI, and if you click on the legend, it will highlight that part of whatever series is related right. to, to the, so you know in Excel you can get the same thing, but the way it is is uh, where, where, where was it right here? So, so you you press S11. This might change your mind, okay? Just I'm just showing this maybe as a, like exploring <laughs> the data, and if you click on the filter button right here, the chart filters. That's why I was asking if there was a keyboard shortcut to get to. Oh to yeah, was, if you click I it, you get that. Look at this. Yeah. You can highlight. And this is awesome because I mean in you know in data visualization, sometimes you want to drive focus when you're communicating. You like uh, you just want to maybe, hey, and in 2015, and then you give your talk. And it really works pretty well with other like charts. For example, this one that you presented. Yes. You can uh, bring it to make it bigger and move it. Actually, wait. Uh chart design move chart and take it to a new sheet. And if you again go to the chart element, chart filters, then you can just focus on that, then focus on the max, or just focus on one month. Right. And I was like, I was like really mind blown. I, I never expected it like to have this effect. I mean, I always saw that the, those three icons there, but I never like pay attention. And if you go oh. to someone, something more like I don't know. Uh, I'll just showcase this a little bit, just like maybe a scatter plot. That, that works. That works also. I mean, you don't you don't have to put the chart into its own um, uh, sheet. It, yeah. yeah, you're you're demonstrating now. It works in any chart. Any chart, yeah. But it it, it really offers a nice uh, UX, you know, but yeah, uh, user experience, you know, for for the whole like highlighting effect. I, I like well, it. it. It makes it makes a presentation dynamics if if you can do that to show. Um, to show people what you're talking about, right? And, and you know the other thing is, about. if you if you hover over it, you see the data range. You know, it's highlighting the series that it corresponds to, so yes. it really can help you like to understand. Oh, this chart, what, what is it? What, what you know, what what kind of data is pulling from? And that way, uh, I I think it's useful. I mean, I didn't know about it. I over I always overlooked at it. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, maybe well, you know, we, like I said, we 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 all we use five percent, and and yeah. this is this is like the sixth percent, and and in order <laughs> to make room in your head for it, you have to lose something else, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is all charts that I did, but like for example, this one you can highlight it like a specific item, so you can see that it yep. highlights that line, and then this one, or maybe just the bars, or just focus on one year. Which is nice because, like again, you drive focus in your you know communication. Yeah, exactly. So, so if somebody knows how to get to these buttons with a keyboard, uh, let me know. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, <laughs> ask my. You, you know who who would know if it's possible is Bill Jelen, but um. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, Bill will know. Yeah. Really, really, really useful. I mean, you it, it's something that you know in Power BI people like it. And in, in Excel, of course, is, is uh, well, I thought it was not possible, but it is, you know, and it's a feature. Yeah, very nice visual effect for sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. But I'll I mean, it's, it's, it's nice in that it's dynamic and you can use it on the fly while you're explaining to somebody. It doesn't take long to set it up. 
No, 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 no. For example, here, this is mean the Tracy's charts, uh, a file that she has, and it also works very nice. You can just oh, highlight yeah. one category and just like explain, which is perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I'll start sharing here. Uh, yeah. Nice. Thank you, Carlos. Yeah, Sylvia, thanks. All right. Uh, it's been uh, two hours. Yeah, it's been, it's been <laughs> a while. Thank you to all of you who stayed with us until now. We have a uh, peak of probably 70 people, um, and then we have kind of half of that after the last few minutes people are maybe leaving for dinner or something in their days. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I'm going to share my screen again, just in case uh, people want to know how to reach out to John. There's his uh, um, here, here. There's uh, his uh, social media there, and the website. It's not there. What is it, John? The website, John um, Peltier. It's uh, PeltierTech.com. Okay, PeltierTech.com. Yeah, you don't have my email there either, which is John, my first name, J-O-N at PeltierTech.com. But uh, people who watch the the video, they have that on several times. You you had your contact, right? Yeah. Well, well, actually, it's, it's also um, the website and the email address are uh, on the first uh, worksheet of of each of the files that I provide. That you share. Okay. Yeah. So um, you can reach me through that, and I I never mind uh, answering questions for somebody that that caught one of my shows. So. Yeah, and feel free to reach out to John or even post on social media wherever you feel comfortable. Uh, tag John, tag myself, or yeah, use the hashtag MSXL Toronto so that we can reply back to you. Uh, and just spread the word. If you think the session was any val uh, brought any value to you, just share so that other people know that uh, these sessions are happening. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Uh, Thank you. I'm looking forward to seeing you again next month. I, I think the content will be uh, great again. Uh, it's a pleasure to, to bring all these guests and learn from all of you. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, 